Uh, we're working with the, the Eurorack synthesizer. I've got the Eurorack synthesizer connected to the, the speakers through the outs unit here, okay? Uh, but we're going to be making sound with the synthesizer box here, okay? So my first piece of advice with the synthesizer box, when you get started making sound with it, is to turn all the knobs to the uh, left. So there's a few up here that are not at the left, so I would recommend doing that, okay? Uh, and then you need something to, right now, it's not going to make any sound on its own because uh, these are, this is a truly modular synthesizer. Each block is independent of each other. So they're not connected behind the scenes other than they're all connected to power. So that's, that's what uh, the power is for. Uh, and you can see some of the power through this window that I've placed here. Uh, my main reason for having plastic here is so you don't stick your fingers back there and, and uh, shock yourself, okay? Because that is uh, voltage back there. And so that's, that's why I put the, the plexiglass there, okay? But we're going to be working with the synthesizer, and we need a cable out of here. So this box contains, uh, uh, it's upside down, that would have been tragic, um, contains all of our, our cables. So go ahead and pop that open. Well, I guess, well, first I'll say someone, someone decided a few semesters ago it would be helpful to note like the different lengths of the different colors. So you can see that note there from somebody a few semesters ago. I didn't do that. Somebody in the class did that. Um, so we've got different length cables. Okay, the, the reason different colors are different lengths, it doesn't change the, the flow of electricity uh, any uh, to have a gray cable or a purple cable or a yellow cable, okay? Um, the main reason is to denote the different lengths that are in the box, but then also to um, help you with sorting things out once you get a spaghetti mess up here of cables, okay? You can actually more quickly trace your cables, okay? So go ahead and gra grab a relatively long, that blue one should be pretty long. No, that's not long enough. Hey, there we are. Okay, we're back in business. So synthesizer box here. Okay, everything's turned to the left. Uh, we need to connect the output. So I'm going to start with the mix out there, okay? And you want to connect it to the outs. The outs is the last stop before going into the mixer in the studio, okay? You notice there's two inputs here, left and right. And what does the left one say in the parentheses there? Mono. Mono, okay. So when you connect to left, it will actually send to both channels, okay? So go ahead and connect to left. Okay, and then you have, uh, there's two level knobs on here, okay? Uh, but you can see how there's little boxes around each one, okay? So the level knob that goes to the mixer is the, the, the bottom one here, okay? So if you, let's see, are we, we need to turn this up. I hear it. Okay. Not too much. Yeah. You hear that click? Okay. That's the oscillator. It is at such a low frequency that it is just simply clicking every few seconds. Okay. Uh, so we need to turn up the frequency. I would turn it down a little bit because it's going to get loud. Um, I, I needed you to turn it up to actually hear the click. But if we come back over to the synthesizer box, grab the frequency knob, start turning it. Hey, now we're getting a tone. Yes. Okay. Um, and I need to come over here too far. Okay, so we've got this connected now. Okay, all inside of the synthesizer box, we can actually produce frequency modulation. That's why you see the, the letters FM on a few of these knobs here, okay? If you take the um, FMCV and turn that up, ah, uh, yes, okay. Okay. Do you ever hear how it's like increasing in its its frequency sweeps? Okay. Uh, turn it back down to about uh, three. Is that nine o'clock here? Okay. Now, in addition to this, you have um, an LFO here. So go ahead and turn, move that slowly. Everybody hear what that's doing to the sound? Maybe do this so you can see all the knobs at the same time. Okay, so those two knobs control uh, your overall frequency modulation, okay? And then in addition, there's this switch here for range, okay? Um, so what I, in, in testing it out this morning, okay, the frequency knob is gonna control the, the frequency of your carrier, okay? The 
FMCV is going to control the strength of the sidebands, those unlimited sidebands. Let me get it. So that gets, so that's one, that's the carrier wave. I'm starting to add sidebands now by turning this CV, okay? And then the LFO, go ahead and turn that slowly, is going to change the position of those sidebands. So everybody will follow that? Okay. Frequency is going to be your, your carrier frequency. FMCV is going to be the strength of your sidebands. LFO is going to be the position of those sidebands. And the LFO has this one other extra thing. Go ahead and flip that switch right there. It says range. Yeah. When you flip it down, it has a lower range. And now you can really hear the frequency modulation. Yes? Okay. Just very slowly going up and down. Okay. Almost sounds like a siren. Right? Okay. But it's modulating the frequency up and down, and it makes it obvious for your ears what, what is happening, okay? All that's happening when we increase the range is that it's moving up and down so fast that your, your, let's say your ears can process it, but your brain can't process that movement as much. And so your brain tries to figure out what's going on, and it just says, I just hear a frequency here, here, and here. That's the, you know, the sidebands and the carrier and, all, and the other sidebands, okay? It's moving too fast for your brain to process, okay? So go ahead and flip it back up. It's moving pretty fast, but now if I start to slowly change that, you'll hear them kind of fuse. That's just, it's like stable. It's just a big mass of timbre now. Okay? And even when it, the sidebands start to collapse back in on themselves, it still sounds a little different than a, a single side wave, sine wave. Okay, so that's FM synthesis with the synthesizer block. Any questions about that? Yeah, come on. Yeah, these are going to control different aspects of the sidebands. So this this will control the pitch, the pitch, the main pitch that you hear. This is going to affect the, the timbre. They, they change your timbre perception. So it, it makes the timbre more or less complex, OK? So if you want to think of it as like the, the pitch and the timbre, that's, that's the way to kind of think of them together, OK? Um, OK, so thank you, Ruben. Uh, next up, I'd like Brandon.